We are Julie and Martin and we live on our narrowboat, Rhapsody in Blue. Join us on our journey as we go through some stunning scenery, tunnels, we meet wildlife on the way, as we cruise the inland waterways of the UK. Yeah, so this vlog is going to be all about us. I'll show you sort of taking out the log burner and the installation of the new reflex diesel burner. So let's hope it is as good as they say it is because it's flipping cold. <laughs> Catch you later. Martin's just going to start tackling, removing the log burner. Chimney, flu, the lot. Everything's coming out today. Right. Okay. Yep. Martin's now got chimney. to empty the chimney of all its muck. And so first things first is we made sure that we shut the fire inside. <laughs> made sure the door was sealed. And Martin is now chimney sweeping. <laughs> Let's get rid of all the muck that's down there. It doesn't actually look too bad to be fair. We've managed to um, sell the fire already. Someone's coming to pick it up in a couple of days time. So that'll be good. But as you can probably see there's ice on the ground. It's not quite as frosty as it was before, but we've got freezing fog today. We've picked the coldest snap of the year to have our diesel stove fitted. So we're gonna have no heating today, apart from the Ebbers Batcher. And tomorrow, Paul from Lockgate will be arriving with our shiny new diesel stove. We hope. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> Martin's just trying to free up the sealant that's around the top of the chimney, the inner chimney, flue. He's just trying to break the seal. So this is the inside of the chimney. Martin's cleaned a fair bit, but you can see this stuff that Martin's trying to get away at the side here. I don't know if I can point it out. It's this stuff here. It's like a sealant, sort of like a sealant. Sorry, the boat was just um, manoeuvring. Well, that's just, yeah. Right, okay. It's getting time consuming. Get along, uh... Would you like me to go and make you a coffee while you finish that little bit? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. yeah. Any excuse for me to come in the warm five minutes? I'll make him a coffee and some biscuits. How are you getting on? Almost done this end, and then just got to check the seal. Okay. On the... Can I have a little sneaky peek through? Yeah, look at my hole. Get onto the side. Have a look down my hole. Your chimney hole. Oh, I see. Yeah, you've got quite a bit away now already. All this has got to come out, all this wood in. Yep. All right. Okay. You're doing a grand job there, mate. You asking me to do? Don't rattle the pipe on the inside. Okay. So Martin's asked me to rattle the pipe from the inside. And it doesn't really match. So I'm going to put the camera down and see if it's off again. Yeah, so we're undoing the surround inside because as the as Martin was wriggling the chimney from the top started pushing the ceiling lining down so we're gonna undo oh. this hopefully this will help hold it I'm just gonna try and twist this now that's it you're free all right so yeah. now we can get the... Clean it now, we know that's... We know yeah. that's free. What's 
got the rest out of the way, hopefully. Start tidying up. Finally get a nice extension to come through. Mark, remember this is YouTube. Oh, sorry. Language. I've got to be very good now. One's hose is not coming through one's roof. <laughs> Just push it, love. Okay. Twist and push. No, go on, just twist it. The, the flow should come out. Twist it and then pull it towards you. Go on. You can do it, Willie. Ready? One, two, three. We now have a hole in the roof. <sighs> Martin's going to get the excess <sighs> packing down. That's it, that's done. And then we'll Isn't be able it? to give it a. This will come off. My brush. And I'll give it a real clean. And there we are. We'll be in the meantime. We need to move this outside and give it a good clean. Yeah? So there's our makeshift muck catcher. <laughs> the uh, blue carrier bag. I've just stuck it to the ceiling. I just hope that's going to work. Hopefully you can see this. It seems that the carrier bag is working. Martin is sort of filing it down up there to get all the horrible bits off and they're all falling into the bottom of the bag. So thankfully that's working. We have thick ice on the inside of our windows. That's how cold we are. He can't fit this diesel heater quick enough I tell you. So today's the day that we have our um, reflex diesel stove installed or day one of installation. Um, I'd like to say we were up bright and early this morning waiting for it, but to be fair, we didn't want to get out of bed. It's so cold. I don't know if you can see um, behind me, there's frost everywhere. The boat is covered in ice. We had ice on the inside of the windows, so, yeah um you'll see we have already taken out the um cold log burner um so you can imagine we've only got the air dispatcher to heat the boat um and we have to get out of bed to put that on so <laughs> it was like neither of us wanted to get up and put that on but we're okay we're it's not that bad it's just flipping cold and as you can see everything is iced up Look at that. As I said earlier, we had thick ice on the inside of the windows. All gone now, as we managed to get, yeah, we got the air dispatcher on and uh, oh, the back of the boat gets lovely and toasty warm. But from the kitchen through to the lounge, no, it's still cold, <laughs> it's freezing. <laughs> But we're just waiting for Paul to turn up now so we can get underway. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Here he is. Yeah, getting ready with his gloves. As you can probably see, the crutch cover is all ice. Show it's like him, Mark. Just show him, it's like cardboard. It's just sort of all iced up. Well, it might be wearing it. You're probably wondering why we're changing our perfectly good multi-fuel stove for a diesel one. Well, we understand everyone is different. Some people prefer multi-fuel, some people prefer diesel. These are just our reasons. Firstly, the dust. Everyone knows you get a lot of dust from coal, soot and ash. So hopefully we won't have as much mess. Secondly, we don't really have the room to store all the coal, wood, kindling, etc. 
And as we're continuous cruisers, we would need to have a fairly large stock of each in case we get frozen in or break down, etc. And thirdly, we're looking forward to a drier heat, so less condensation and one we can regulate too. We'll be able to turn the heat up or down at the touch of a button. We've had to put everything at the dinette area. So now, and underneath, which it's not ideal but at least we have somewhere to put our stuff while while the stove's being fitted we've now taken the stove out completely i've quickly washed the tiles and there's a sneaky peek at the new diesel stove it's happening and so it begins so it looks like we've chosen a good place to mow Paul from Lockgate has got a nice workbench to use. <laughs> Beautifully frosted as well. Yes, yes, freezing, but hey ho. <laughs> so, just trying to get the right combination of flue pipes. It's all technical stuff, this, isn't it? trick if you don't come to this part. Measurement for anyone out there wants to put them on their own, the measurement you need to do from the top of that exit off the stove to the top of that. Right. Give it a good shift up, make sure all of these seals yeah. are tight. Um, measure that to that. Use a vernier or something accurate. And then when you, you can cut that bit off the bottom of the one meter. Yes. And it'll fit or you just get Paul from Lockgate to fix it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go down on 45 degrees. We'll level okay. up this window. emptied out our front locker um, in the well deck which is where there, our yeah. diesel tank is going to go <laughs> Paul has arrived with our diesel tank <laughs> good morning Paul good morning. <laughs> he's just about to see if it actually fits in the hole <laughs> I'm going to get out of the way. I should have been outside the boat. Okay. It's not looking so good. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the tank is too big. Slightly too. We're going to fit a temporary diesel tank just to get us going. And then our one's going to be redone in a week or so's time. Here goes the important bit, the shiny bit. <laughs> and this guard, it does actually perform a function, doesn't it? Yeah. It is there for a reason. It's not just to look decorative, is yeah. it? When it's running, it'll get warm, but like a hot radiator warm, so you're not going to lose any skin or hurt yourself. These parts get hot. Yes. Yeah. The right angle bend gets hot. Obviously, the hot plate, cast iron hot plate on top gets hot, and the glass gets hot. Yes. The rest right are pretty cool. Brilliant. That's lovely, doesn't it? Happy Martin? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the old stove going. 
Mate, he's got the flu over his shoulder. I was going to give you my back. And this is the yeah, chappy that's yeah, buying it. So, yeah. Oh, look, he's, he wants his stove. <laughs> I'm going to do towage and steerage sandwiches, all right. And this is this is Connor Reese who's just bought the, the, the stove. Hold on, let me just zoom in there. CW Boat Mover. So you're a boat mover. I am. Um, do you work in a specific area? Or all over. Just all over? All over. Right. 80 boats this year as well. Wowzer. Right, so I shall put a link link to his uh, website and, and phone few, number and that below. There's a few of us that can do it. If I can't do it, Pete can. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Nice doing business with you. <laughs> I say it's a lovely, it's a lovely stove. Oh, it is absolutely. It is. It's very warm. Kept it in good condition as well. Oh yes, yeah. Okay. Is this the moment of truth? <laughs> Right, you've got a tap over here, it's a fire valve. So if yeah. it ever gets to 70 degrees centigrade, I, there's a cabin fire. This pipe yeah. will heat up anyway, but there's an element inside that it melts and it yeah. shuts the fuel down if it were to, if it were to have a cabin fire. Yeah. Um, you've got the cleaning needle, that should push yeah. all the way in. Over time, it will stiffen up a little bit, so you can, it will come out if you let it. Well, yeah. yours won't, uh, look, you don't need to take it out. But you make a rule of where the pipe is there, if you just leave it there, about four, four to five inches back, Yep. Uh, and once when you use it every week, two weeks, it makes it goes all the way in. It pushes a six mil pin through an eight mil hole, so fuel will still get past it. But there's no if you left it in and ran it, the rod will heat up because it goes right into the flame. And there's an O ring in this brass housing, and that will start to weep eventually. So if you leave it back, if you make a rule of it, if you push it and pull it back, yeah, it's back okay. to where it was. That's the cleaning needle. So on startup, we'd press that red button. Yep. Um, it pushes a pin down inside. There's a a thermocouple goes into the burner part, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and if it re recognises there's a flame there, the pin will stay down. The red part will come back up, um, like I say, uh, pushes the pin down. If there's a flame inside, it yep. recognises it, keeps the pin down, allows the fuel to come through until there's no flame there. So if you were to turn it off, it'll recognise there's no flame, or if it blew out, it'll be no flame and it'll flip the fuel off. So the procedure for lighting, so the lighting procedure will show you, well, we'll show you with fire lighters anyway, but with methylated spirit, you want to move on to that. Mm -hmm. So everything's turned off. You can leave this valve over, open. Um, but with the, with the grey knob on top turned off, so you've come cold stove, want to light it, it's turned off. You lift your lid. Um, for methylated spirit, leave all the cages and stuff in there. Yep. So you have a small mm -hmm. measure of methylated spirit, 50 millilitres. If you just pour that carefully onto the top of that disc, it will find its way to the bottom, it's a, it's a, it's a liquid fuel. So oh, put, in the centre of the basket? Yeah, straight in the centre, it will find its way to the bottom anyway, it's, yep. a, it's a liquid. So, so yeah, pour on top of that, close your lid, strike a match, make sure your match is going. Lift it in an inch or two, just pop your match in, close the lid. Um, Always light a, a cold stove as such. If it were pre-lit or it's not long gone out, you want to light it again, you've got to let it all cool down. Because what it will do is heat the uh, methylated spirit and if you like petrol, it'll blow the cobwebs out. Right. Um, so always light it when it's cold with meth. If you want to light it and it's still a little warm, use a fire lighter. Yep, um, yep. so you pop the match in, let it go for two minutes. Um, the flame will go quite high, about 20 seconds, and go quite low. And you'll usually hear it flicking around the bottom. And eventually after a minute and a half, two minutes, you look through the glass, uh, the mesh will be glowing red. You have blue, little blue flames coming out there, holds on to the mesh. Uh, and that's the time to turn your diesel. I'm going to try, I'm going to put it underneath that probe. As best we can. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then once it's lit, Plenty of time to do it. Yep. Once I slip, shut the lid. Get warm. <laughs> and then we'll put it to the. Well, I'm going to test it. You should put it to number two, but I'm going to put it to number three because I'm going to test it. So okay. if you do that, put it to number one and a half to two. Fuel comes in, gets hotter, hotter, bigger, because it starts with a yellow flame, it's a bigger yellow flame. But once it gets the temperature, it goes blue. Oh, so we don't have to do anything else now? That's it, yeah. it. That's it, we're far lighter. It's very quiet. More I was expecting some sound. There's nothing, is there? There's still the engine. There 
goes in cold at the bottom. Yep, so the central burn tube inside, that heats up. And the air gap between the burn tube and the body has air in it, obviously. As that heats up, it pulls up, draws the cold air in, heats up through the body. It's warmer near the top here. Yeah. Anyway, so that's the air, in, air around the stove. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the hot plate and all that heat coming up out of the bottom. Yeah, so it creates a dry heat. Just put your hand above it. Yeah, I'm just saying, so it creates yeah. a dry heat. So yeah, so that'll help. help. Conversation. Oh yeah, and start to feel. So this is the empty front locker, waiting for the fuel tank, which is now the correct size, which is good. Diesel tank is now fitted into our locker. There's a breather in the corner and you can just see the pipe going off the copper pipe going off down and then into the boat yeah we've had we've had the reflex stove now for just over a week or so um, i've taken the fan off the top just to show you that um, we have bought a trivet to go on the top um, because the plate gets very 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 hot the hot plate so it's advisable to have a trivet but yeah we've had had the stove now for just over a week we are thrilled to bits it's absolutely fantastic um just to let you know that we're not sponsored or paid by <laughs> lockgate in any way whatsoever this was our choice we wanted to get the stove done and we just thought it'd be nice to put a video together to show you guys. Um, I've put some links in the description so you can have a look on their website um, because there's there's quite a few different versions, um, various sizes and prices. And everything.